Hello there, welcome. Ever wanted to know how to draw a bird? Well, it's your lucky day then. Today you'll be learning how to draw this lovely looking pileated woodpecker. So buckle up, we're about to start. Okay, first, how are you going to draw without materials? We'll be using the following. 2B pencil, 6B pencil, a blending stick, an eraser, A sheet of A4 paper. You can use any paper though, but I'm listing it in case you want to follow along to the letter. But since not everyone has an art supply shop around the corner, don't despair. You can do it on a budget with regular supplies. Just use an 8B pencil, though I'd recommend at least a 2B pencil, it makes it easier to add values, an eraser and a Q-tip to use as a blending stick. Last but not least, we'll divide the video in the following list of steps, so you can follow it easier, as well as navigate it better in case you want to go over one of the steps again. The first thing you want to do is draw a frame on your paper. That way your drawing will be better constrained, thus helping with both composition and putting your drawing in a picture frame down the line. You can use any dimensions, but I'd recommend between 1.5 and 2 cm. In this case, I'm going with 1.5. Now, take a moment to look at the page and think where you want to place this bird and how you want to do it. Knowing some composition helps, but in this case, I'm going to help you with this. Let's just put it here. Great. Quick note, it's always good to have reference pictures. More often than not, you won't have enough visual information in your memory that allows you to get too far. So use references. So far, we have the first mark on the paper. That's good, but it's not a very nice drawing yet. So let's move along. Once you've decided where you want your subject, you can sketch in a few guidelines to help you keep your drawing in one place and on scale. Otherwise, you might find your drawing going all over the page. So if you're just starting out with drawing, constraining your drawing space can help. Before we start trying to draw each individual feather like an art person, you want to lay down a gesture. This is a rough sketch of how the lines of your subject flow. Take a look at what you're drawing and sketch some lines following the natural movements of the shapes. You'll see this if you focus enough. When your gesture is done, you can move on to placing the big shapes that make up your subject. Use the gesture as a wireframe and loosely sketch in the shapes. When you're drawing anything with more complexity than a basic shape, it's always advisable to break it down to simpler shapes. It might sound silly, but trust me, that's how people get stuff now. Shape's done? Great! Now do it again. Materializing a bird, it's just a matter of conjuring up spheres and cubes. We broke down the complex subject into simpler shapes, now we have to build upon them and go from a base to something that looks more complete. With that I mean, put smaller shapes and lines on top of those basic shapes. These additions are the guidelines to stick the details over. If the basic shapes on the wireframe are the foundations of a house, Think of these new added shapes and lines as the bricks that make up the walls. But you wouldn't want to live in a house with plain walls and no roof, would you? Once the guidelines we just added are in place, now it's time to get into the details. Sort of. We'll start adding small specks of detail, not too much. For example, a line to divide the beak in its upper and lower part, the lines that mark the pattern in the feathers and we'll make some marks to hint at the different feathers. Congratulations, now your birdhouse has a roof and paint on the walls. But what good is a house without a couch to sit on? That part of the analogy translates to the values of our drawing, or as some people call it, the shading. Halt! Checkpoint! Before we go any further, take your drawing and paste it on the wall, or lay it against something, then take a few steps back and look at it. Zooming out like this helps you take a good look at your walk, allowing you to see it as a whole instead of focusing on a set part or details. This way, spotting any mistakes and deducting corrections becomes a lot easier, since whatever is off will likely jump out at you. Also, you may want to try squinting when looking at it. 
This will make the drawing blurry, helping you see just the bulk of it without any details, which will also help you to spot any mistakes. Now, everyone ready? I hope so. No bathroom stops until we're there. The time to add value has arrived. Before we do anything else, it's convenient to set up a light source. In this case, I'm going to choose a light source coming in from the top left side of the page, just as the morning sun would illuminate the bird in nature. Once this is set, I like to first lay the groundwork for my values. Since not everything has the same value when you ignore light sources, these values need to be differentiated, leaves the drawing loose definition and start getting flat. So, for the black feathers, I'll lay down a darker vase value than the one for the red feathers and the tree trunk. The white feathers, I'll leave as the color of the paper for now. Even though the tree trunk could belong to almost any tree, I decided to think of it as a light color tree. This way, I can have a lighter value for it, which will help contrast with the bird and prevent our woodpecker from losing its prominent spot on the drawing. After the base values are set, it's time to start using value to give depth to the drawing. To do this, you need to think three-dimensionally. Make up the shapes in your mind and imagine how they react to light, how the light would wrap around them, creating shadows and highlights. Once you have that, you need to translate that into your drawing. Grab your 6B pencil, or if you don't have one, just keep using the one you have in your hand, and start adding in the value differences. First, darken the sections that would be in the shadow, and if you need to, bring in that eraser to lighten up the values that fall in the highlighted areas. Looking good, isn't it? Though you might notice that perhaps it's looking a bit... squarish? That can happen when you add values that have a sharp border differentiating them from each other. To remedy this, take your blending stick, or Q-tip if you don't have stick, and lightly run it across those sharp borders. This will smooth out the transition between them, giving you a more progressive value change. Be careful not to overdo it though. When you add those values, the interactions between your pencil and paper generate a texture which can be very visually enriching to a drawing. Blending a value decreases the strength of this texture. Ideally, you'd like to preserve this texture at least for the focal point of the drawing. Blending a value decreases the strength of this texture. Ideally, you'd like to preserve this texture at least for the focal points of the drawing, such as the bird's head or the wing that's facing away. Now it's time to bring some more definition into the mix. For this, you want to start addressing particular details using the guidelines we set up for ourselves earlier, or well, what's left of them in the old walk. Now, it's time to focus more on subtle value changes. Use this to make smaller things appear, such as some feathers, the bird's feet, details on its face, details in the tree trunk, and so on. Be careful though. You don't want to add extreme amounts of detail all over the place. Bringing for small things like feathers should be directed to the focal points I mentioned earlier. An excessive amount of detailing everywhere can flatten the drawing, or make the eye lose sight of the main subject. Wow, look at you, you made it, unlike the others. This is the final step. Once you've walked on all these things I've been telling you about, what rests is to take another step back and look at the drawing as a whole. Look at it thoroughly and devise if there's anything that needs fixing. Be it a value that needs to be darker or lighter, a missing highlight, something that doesn't look good and could use some corrections. There isn't really a consensus on when you can check a drawing 100% done. The level of detail and work you want to put into it depends on you. 
and remember, have fun and enjoy the process. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Keep growing and improving. Goodbye.